Good morning and thank you for being with us. The town of Waterford is set to become the home to the biggest data center in New England and not everyone is happy about it. Joining me this morning, Tom Quinn, the manager of Any Edge, the company bringing that facility to town. Tom, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Eric. Good I want to start with this. I, I think people can imagine, but explain to us, what is a data center and what does it do? Well, a data center is a big building that houses servers for compute, but we're not building that. We're building an AI base for Connecticut. It's now called an AI factory. This building would be $1.6 billion set on, a, on the property at Millstone Nuclear Power Plant. The, um, the property is 528 acres. It's an ideal site because it has 12 fiber connections right in that area, uh, both with the rail line and up to 95, and it has obviously adjacent energy to support the project so there's no congestion uh, on the grid. We'll, we'll talk more about that because getting energy from Millstone is a big part of the, right. the project. But one thing that I didn't understand until I looked at it, stuff is actually arriving by train and by truck. I mean, I'm thinking data, I'm thinking it's all coming over a cable somehow, but that rail access and the highway access is important to you? That's correct. Throughout the New England area and, and through many of the southern states, the fiber falls in the rail line. Uh, when 95 was built, there was conduit in and fiber has since been pulled. So we have the benefit of both of those. It's probably one of the richest fiber locations in the entire state. Plus, it's in the center of a large industrial project of 528 acres. Very hard to find that anywhere else in the state. Uh, high security area, which is all the things that we would need to build the project. All right. Tell us a little bit about the Millstone Connection, because one of the things that uh, critics and just people concerned about the project have said is the, the huge draw of power. When you have that many servers, Absolutely that right. much technology, it takes a lot of power. Why is Millstone a good partner for you? Well, this is why. Currently, and Millstone is a merchant plant, which means they can sell to anybody. It's not regulated. They can sell this energy anywhere they want. Currently, half of their energy goes to out-of-state places, on contract, out-of-state. When you send that energy out-of-state, you don't put public benefit charges or FMC charges on it, which means that the state is losing about $1.15 billion in otherwise collectible money if we keep that energy in the state. This goes to fund a lot of things, including the energy assistance program, six renewable programs, and in fact, the Millstone Clean Energy contract, which the AI base would fund one third of. I just want to make sure everyone understands that. One third would be funded by this one private company. In addition to that, the town of Waterford has an economic benefit of 231 million, and then the state asked to do two things for them. One of the two things was to add something for the state. So what we did is we donated for 30 years with a 2.5% escalator, 1.44 million a year to go specifically to the public um, energy assistance uh, fund. So that helps that along. And the second thing is the state wanted a place to put their own energy, their own clean energy. In fact, Connecticut, if they relocate here, and they've asked us about all this, and asked for a discount, which we've provided, of 27.5% for state for 30 years, uh, they would have the only 100% clean energy data center of any state in the United States. So all those things are working. No doubt. There was an effort. There was a bill a couple of years ago that went through the legislature trying to attract data centers in general to the state of Connecticut. There was a push to get these things here. Now some people in the Waterford East Lime area who are opposed to your project say that was a huge mistake. We shouldn't have done it. I want to tell you some of just the bullet points that they have and just have you as briefly sure. as you can respond to them. Uh, the first one is noise. Okay, noise. So there haven't had to be quiet data centers anywhere in the country. For example, the largest data cluster is North Virginia. It's 74 decibels. No one cares. In Connecticut, it's 54. We're going to be substantially lower, and I want to make sure everyone understands this. There's the science to make a data center very quiet. You use comp computational fluid dynamic studies, airflow studies. You build a 15-foot parapet wall. There are no diesel engines on the site, so that's a big quiet. The second thing is air handlers are located inside the building, not outside the building. Another big quiet. Also, the substation is going to be surrounded with sound atten attenuation material, and there's a 15-foot parapet wall insulated on top of the building. But the thing that really makes it quiet is over those fan units, 
is an actual enclosure designed to keep that quiet. So it's just really about money and time. Why is it possible to spend that amount of time and effort on sound is because there are no diesels to purchase or maintain on the site. So we've moved it around on the spreadsheets to make it work. And this is an ideal. This is what the commissioner in, in Connecticut would like to see, an all-electric operation. How about environmental concerns? Is that something some people in the area, whatever maybe their, their so concerns like to, are, they're worried about the environment if you put this thing in there? And I I am an environmentalist. I grew up nearby there. Um, I will tell you that we have a 500-page environmental report. The site is absolutely clean. We've designed the buildings away from any of the water sources or, or uh, um, uh, you know, obstacles that may be there. We also have uh, a big a big question was about water usage. Now, in certain areas like Tennessee, where they have the Tennessee Valley Authority, they cool with water because they have millions of gallons of vector. We don't have that here. So we've gone a totally electric data center. In fact, we don't even have to tear up roads in Waterford. We can use water for only sanitary purposes. So we've got a pretty clean setup here. There is no pollution. I want to make sure everyone knows that. This is a, a box building serviced by electricity with sanitary use only. So those are some of the things that have come together. But the environmentals are clean on the site. One, there is a bill in the legislature right now that would look for Pura, the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, to do a study on this. And you say that study is not necessary. Critics have at least raised concerns. You just addressed some of them. But why not yeah. do a study first? Well, Pura doesn't have any authority because the energy is purchased behind the meter directly from Millstone on a long-time contract. Again, the same energy that would be sold out of state anyway. So uh, I think that, you know, there's a control issue they want to try to get in to do this study. Here's the problem with the study. And uh, the folks out there really need to know that 52% at peak all winter long of our energy is available for sale at the grid. If you go to the ISO New England report from March 1st, 2024, go to page 46, you're going to see all the new generation parts there. And I've given this to the Energy Committee and all the way up to the governor's office. So what it says is in the summertime, 25% of the entire grid is available. For sale. And this is at peak, peak capacity. OK, there's also a new day ahead ancillary services thing just approved by FERC for ISO. That happened on January 29th. That's a guaranteed new marketing system that's very resilient with the unstable factor of these renewables coming in and the markets changing all the time. Uh, so those are some of the things I want to tell you this very important fact in this report. We have twenty eight thousand five hundred megawatts in our ISO New England grid. The ISO grid predicts. For 404 projects currently before them are bringing 47,000, that's correct, 1,000 megawatts of electricity by the end of the decade. With 1,200 coming on in the next 12 months, another 500, and 2027, uh, you'll have 998, hard to remember all the numbers, 998 um, megawatts coming on 2027. There's going to be a tremendous ramp up of energy in the ISO New England grid and across the country. Data centers aren't the only thing going to be using a lot of electricity. It's electric cars that people are proposing now and so forth that are all going to be used. The entire country needs to boost up its electrical supply. We are all out of time. You said it's hard to remember the numbers. You had them all uh, in your head. <laughs> we appreciate you answering it, addressing some of the concerns. It's still before the legislature. We'll continue to follow that, and we'll continue to follow your plans and your agreement with the uh, town of Waterford. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thomas Quinn from Any Edge, thank you for being here. Thanks and for having the me, Eric. Appreciate it.